Hello YouTubers and welcome to another Disney Pixar Cars diecast review. Today we're going to take a look at the three default paint jobs of Lightning McQueen from the three main Cars films. Cars 1, Cars 2, and Cars 3, which this version right here on the very right is my most, most favorite out of all the rest. And now, before we get right into the review, let me discuss something. So, <clears throat> throughout the years of his racing career, Lightning McQueen has been going into many different styles of his bright, traditional bright red paint job with yellow number 95. From his beginnings as a rookie in 2005, being a worldwide superstar champion in 2011, to being a racing legend from 2017 onwards. And he had also had been going into many different paint jobs other than his bright red paint job, such as dark shades of red and blue. And he has certainly came a very, very long way. First, we're, let's start off with the regular Cars 1 Lightning McQueen. So, after being fired by his sp old sponsor Smell Swell Deodorizer, Lightning met his transporter, his new, I mean his new transporter Mac, a 1980s Mac Superliner semi-truck, he then took Lightning to meet the Rusty's brothers, Rusty and Dusty Rusty's, a 1963 Dodge Dark Coupe and a 1967 Dodge A100 Van Duo, who were looking for another racer to sponsor their company, Rusty's, after their previous racer, racer number 01, or should I say Adam Shieldson, as my name for it, had a career-ending crash. And after Lightning was chosen for chosen or signed in for Rusty's, he he made his Piston Cup debut and won his first victory at Glen Ellen Speedway. Thus, he became the 2005 season, Piston Cup season's new rookie. And he was up against a ton of racers of the 2005 Piston Cup season, such as Strip the King, what, the legendary reigning seven-time Piston Cup champion, Strip the King Weathers, who was on the verge of retiring, and, Ch and his arch enemy and racing, ri racing opponent Chick Hicks, and the constant runner-up who had been chasing the king's tail fin throughout his most of his career. So you see, the three racers were tied for the season points lead, and during the Dynaco 400 at the beginning of the at the Motor Speedway at the South during the beginning of Cars 1, they were tied for the season points lead, meaning that once the king had retired, Dynaco would, his sponsor Dynaco would be sponsor another racer to race for them. And Lightning wanted to be the first rookie of the 2005 season to win a Piston Cup and cover the Dynaco team. But the problem was, Lightning refused to listen to his pit crew. Therefore, he had recently fired three crew chiefs, resulting in having his entire two back tires blown out, 
and the race itself ended in a crazy three-way tie between him, the king, and Chick. While the fans were waiting for the results, Lightning was being interviewed by Corey Turbowitz and a group of paparazzis. He kept on, on going, being a one-man show, resulting in his old pit crew quitting on the spot. The king, now strip the king weathers, tried to offer Lightning some advice, but Lightning was too busy focusing on what, how, on what would he do once he had won the Piston Cup, um, such as gaining the Dynaco Blue and having fancy tents in a private helicopter, Rotor Turbo Sky, and, and being a Hollywood star. Then at last, the results were announced. Therefore, it was a three-way tie between Lightning, the King, and Chick. When a tiebreaker race at the new LA International Speedway was announced, Lightning wanted to be the first to get there before Chick. But first, he had to make a presentation with his sponsor, Rusty's. As he was greeted, met and greeted by his sponsor, Rusty and Dusty Rusty's, the Rusty's brothers, and his Rusty's fans, including Fred over here. For you see, Lightning hated Rusty cars and wanted fancy tents and a private helicopter, not medicated bumper ointment, and would get them all, 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 once he had won the Piston Cup. Now, along the journey, Lightning got inadvertently separated from his transporter mech along Interstate 40, me, right in the middle of incoming traffic, and he also took a detour on an old abandoned high, single road highway known as Route 66 and, and stumbled upon a town of Radiator Springs where he ran into everything and even torn up the main road. And that's where he was sentenced to remain in Radiator Springs and fix the road. And, the, and during that time, he had made some new friends along the way, like Mater, a rusty tow truck, who would eventually become his best friend, Sally, a blue Porsche, who would, the owner of the Cozy Cone Motel and the town's attorney, who would eventually become Lightning's girlfriend, and Doc Hudson, a navy blue 1951 Hudson Hornet, who was once a racing legend known as the fabulous Hudson Hornet, who would eventually become Lightning's crew chief. And also around that time, Lightning learned some things, like Mater teaching him how to tip tractors and how to be a good friend and how to tip and how to drive backwards. And from Sally, Lee, that how much Radiator Springs and its inhabitants mean a lot to her. And and from Doc of how he used to be a champion race car by the name of the fabulous Hudson Hornet. And, his, and how the racing world had betrayed him after his big crash in 1954. Once the road had been completed, Lightning decided to stay and help his friends for a little bit. Until, but, and then, a swarm of paparazzis arrived on the scene followed by his transporter Mac, who had his agent Harv on the phone in his trailer. Therefore, Lightning was whisked out of Radiator Springs. And, as it turns out, that Doc was the one that called Cory and the paparazzis. And I still admit that it was kind of selfish of Doc to kick Lightning out of Radiator Springs, when Lightning was trying to help the townsfolk of Radiator Springs 
bring the whole town, as well as Route 66, back on the map. And also, and considering Doc wanting to leave his racing days behind him for many years to come. But what do you guys think? Was it actually selfish of Doc to do that? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. So anyhow, during the tiebreaker race, Lightning was too focused on his time, mostly on his time in Radiator Springs, especially his drive with Sally. Then he heard a voice over the radio. It was Doc who had pulled up most of the townsfolk of Radiator Springs, including Mater, as in his new pit crew. And he had, and he had two things that he had up his sleeve his driving backwards skills from Mater and from Doc, turn right, his power sliding maneuvering, also known as turn right to go left. And he was about to win the Piston Cup when Chick was fed up with coming in behind the King, so he gave him a tap off of the track, causing the King to crash right into the infield. The crowd gasped and Lightning saw the King's wreckage on the screen and it reminded him of Doc's crash in 54. So he decided to forfeit the Piston Cup to Chick and help the King push the King across the finish line to finish his racing career, which had impressed the crowds, as well as his friends from Radiator Springs. and as well as his, spa his sponsor and fans. And it, even in and it even impressed Tex Dynaco, the owner of Dynaco, who had offered him the whole Dynaco team, but Lightning objected by saying that he had, has a sponsor and a pit crew that he likes. So, so he decided to stick to Rusty's and all the although Tex can respect it, but he having forgotten his promise to Mater, his very first helicopter ride in Rodar Turbo Sky. And Lightning decided to stay in Radiator Springs as his new home. By the following season in 2006, and the, the, the offer of being the new face of Dynaco was given to the King's nephew, Cal Weathers, with the, his uncle the king himself being Cal's crew chief, and Lightning, and with the help of his new friends from Radiator Springs, including Doc and Mater, Lightning had won his very first Piston Cup championship, as well as the race, of, well as all three races in the Radiator Springs Grand Prix, announced by Mater and Daryl Cartrip against Chick Hicks who somehow was able to keep racing for his second Piston Cup, but continuously failing. Between 2007 and 2010, Lightning had won two more Piston Cups, as well as, well as other races out of, from the Piston Cup, like such as the Mater National Championship, which was hosted by Mater, and the race Rama series against Chick Hicks. Then in 2009, tragic happened. Lightning had lost his mentor, Doc. The circumstances are currently unknown. However, Doc's voice actor, Paul Newman, had died as well, so they had to kill off Doc. <clears throat> and now, we move on to the Cars 2 Lightning McQueen, or should I say, Lightning McQueen with Racing Wheels, or WGP Lightning McQueen. So anyhow, in 2011, during the events of Cars 2, Lightning McQueen had won his fourth Piston Cup in honor of his late mentor, Doc. Then came the World Grand Prix, an international racing competition with, which varied with a variety of countries and 
three laps per race, and powered by olanol, which was invented by Sir Miles Axelrod, which turned out to be gasoline in the end. And Lightning was up against a variety of racers from around the globe, including another racing rival, an Italian Formula One open wheeled racer by the name of Francesco Bernoulli, who turned out not to be a bad guy at the very end. So anyhow, during the first race of the World Grand Prix in Tokyo, Japan, Lightning got distracted by Mader on the headset, who also got distracted by a female British spy car by the name of Holly Sheftwell, who somehow hacked into Mader's headset, causing Lightning to move on to the outside and causing Francesco to take the lead away from him and win the race, leaving Lightning in second. After the race, Lightning yelled at Mater by saying meaningless things that he actually did not mean, causing Mater to leave the team sadly, which Lightning did not expect to happen. Then, during the right before the second race of the World Grand Prix in Porto Corsa, Italy, Lightning along with his friends Fillmore, Sarge, Luigi, and Guido, were staying with Luigi's favorite uncle, Uncle Topolino, in Luigi's old hometown in Carsoli, Italy. Lightning, who wished that he had not yelled at Major in the first place, learned from Uncle Topolino that no fight is more important than friendship, which that made Lightning feel a bit better. I think. During the second race of the World Grand Prix, at the final lap, Lightning regained his winning streak by crossing the finish line first, leaving Francesco in second. During the third and final race of the World Grand Prix in London, England, the race had been interrupted while Mater, who had a bomb on his engine, which was attached by Sir Miles Axelrod and the Lemons, and tried to warn Mater tried to warn Lightning McQueen, but Lightning would not would not get the concept. Mm -hmm. who, who instead focuses on trying to catch up with their friendship. And eventually, after Professor Z and most of the lemons were arrested, Mater and Lightning went to Buckingham Palace to see the Queen, who I unfortunately don't have. have. Now, the reason why I wanted to get the Queen this year is because to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the Queen's reigning. But it has not been ordered yet, I don't think. So hopefully I'll get it by the end of the year. So anyhow, when they went to Buckingham Palace, Maynard pointed out that Axelrod was the victim behind the whole conspiracy. Therefore, Axelrod exposed himself by saying deactivate and was arrested. And after that, Mater was knighted by the Queen and Lightning decreed that Mater will come to his, all of his races from now on. Back in Radiator Springs, Mater and Lightning were telling the whole townsfolk and tourists that about the spy adventure, and then in that, that exact moment, Holly, along with another British spy car, Finn McMissile, showed up and appeared. And during the fourth and unofficial race of the World Grand Prix, also known as the Radiator Springs Grand Prix, 
Lightning showed off his Cachao Francesco sticker right on his back bumper, right in front of Francesco, which was a bit funny compared to me. Although I must admit, it was still funny. Wasn't it to you? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. <clears throat> so now on with the Cars 3 Lightning McQueen. So, prior to the events of Cars 3, and after the events of Cars 2, between 2012 and 2015, Lightning McQueen had won three more Piston Cups, and is now a seven-time Piston Cup champion, and had tied with the same number of Piston Cups as Strip the King Weathers and Dale the Intimidator Earnhardt Sr., number three, the father of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Then, during the 2016 Piston Cup season, during the events of Cars, not the beat start of Cars 3, Lightning was at the top of his game until a new rookie racer arrived on the scene. A next gen and Piston Cup racer and a ra new racing rival by the name of Jackson Storm Horn, dominated the circuit. And many veteran, ra veteran stock cars, including Bobby Swift, Octane Game, Cal Weathers for Dynaco and the King's Nephew, and Brick Yardley, were being displaced by their sponsors in favor of next gen racers including Chase Racelot, Vitaline, who had replaced Brick, and Denny Swervis, Octane Gang, who had replaced Bobby. Lightning pushed himself hard to keep up with Storm in the next generation, but ended up having one of his rear tires blow out, causing him to crash. And after that, Lightning was fully recovered three months later after his... after... In February, in 2017, and went back into his traditional bright red paint job, and went with Mac, Luigi, and Guido to the brand new Rusty's Racing Center near Fireball Beach in Florida huh, to meet his sponsors, Rusty and Dusty Rusties, who had recently sold Rusties to to Sterling, who had bought Rusties from them when the Rusty's brothers decided to retire. And Sterling even gave Lightning a new training suit and introduced him to Lightning's new trainer, Cruz Ramirez. Lightning, but unfortunately, Lightning started off getting nowhere for a week on a virtual racing simulator and he had he he struck a deal with Sterling that that if he wins he decides when he's done and if he loses he'll sell all the mud flaps though so anyhow on Fireball Beach <laughs> Lightning tried to uh, break Storm's record, but ends up falling behind what, what, considering Cruz you know, not being able to ra race him properly. Then, then they switch to Thunder Hollow Speedway, where Lightning McQueen got covered himself in mud and disguised himself as Chester Wibblefelter, while Cruz gained a racing number and nicknamed herself Francis Beltline. But still, Lightning couldn't keep up with, with Storm's record because he was too busy taking care of Cruz. Then, in Thomas, then so they so they went to Thomasville to meet Doc's old crew chief, Smokey, and a trio of surviving racing legends named Junior Moon, River Scott and Louise Barnstormer Nash, who I, unfortunately, don't have. And, all together, the four Piston Cup legends trained Lightning and Cruz 
to to be faster and smarter than Storm. 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 For the Piston Cup's biggest stage, the Florida 500 at Florida International Speedway, and Lightning even got his mojo back. So, right at the during the first laps of the race, Light Sterling ordered Cruz back to the training center to prepare Kurt, I mean, not Kurt, Ronald, for the for next week's race. Then Lightning causing Lightning to remember what he had said to Cruz and what Cruz had said to him. Then a cra then a crash occurred and Lightning somehow a Adverted getting involved into it, adverted getting involved into it, which he, which was pretty easily. Then he ordered Cruz to return and finish the race for him, bearing a number 95 and a Rusty's logo, which Cruz had dominated the track by by overcoming Storm by doing a 360 degree flip over him and winning the race. While, while Cruz was announced first place he's on the scoreboard, Lightning was also in first place as well, because Lightning started the race and Cruz finished it for him. Sterling, impressed with Cruz's performance, offered her to race for him, but Cruz rejected. Then Tex, the owner of Dynaco, arrived on the scene offered Cruz to race for Dynaco and replace the self-retired Cal Weathers. Thus, Cruz accepted, and Tex even bought Rusty's from Sterling. And back in Radiator Springs, Lightning decided to mentor Cruz, who is now bearing the number 51 for Team Dynaco. And... Never since then, Lightning stayed in this paint job from 2017 onwards, which I think is my most, most favorite Lightning McQueen deck, Cal, from all the rest, and, and I believe that he should wear it anywhere he goes, especially in Radiator Springs and on the racetrack, or anywhere else around the world. But what do you guys think? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. <clears throat> And now, without any further ado, let's dig right into the review. So first we're going to start off with the regular Cars 1 Lightning McQueen. So here we've got his happy facial expression, his headlight stickers, and number 95, and his bright red paint job, and his the Rusty's logo, old Rusty's logo on the hood. And on the top we've got the, the yellow number 95, and his yellow name signature. And on both sides, we've got the yellow retro lightning bolt and the Rusty's logo and the gas cap and the old, the red rims on the black wall light year racing tires and the exhaust pipes and the Piston Cup logos saying Piston Cup, Nitrade, Revolting, Octane Gain, Mood Springs, Vitaline, No Stall, all Gas Sprint, Vitaline, Gaskets, Easy Idle, Little Torquey Pistons, RPM, Leakless, Retread, and Clutch Shade. And the lightning bolt stickers and the, the ducktail spoiler with the Rusty's logo. And on the back we've got the taillight stickers with a yellow 95 on one of them. And the Rusty's logo in between. And the yellow rookie stripes saying yellow back bump, yellow bumper sticker saying with the slogan medicated bump ointment. And up next we've got the Lightning McQueen with racing wheels from Cars 2. So here we've got his determined facial expression, his actual working headlights, and on the hood we've got the Hudson Hornet Piston Cup logo on the hood. And on both sides we've got the gray rims on the black wall light year racing tires and the yellow 95 and the yellow number 95 and a yellow lightning bolt mixed with orange flames and the gas cap and the 
WGP-95 with the American flag emblem and the Powered by All in All logo and the World Grand Prix logo and the exhaust pipes. And they, on the top we've got the number 95 and the yellow name signature and the, the flat spoiler with the World Grand Prix logo. And, the, and on the back we've got the tail lights and the World Grand Prix logo in between. And the 95 with American flag emblem on it. And the Powered by All in All logo and the American flag on the back bumper. And lastly, but definitely not least, the Cars 3 Lightning McQueen, my most, most favorite Lightning McQueen decal from all the rest. So here we've got his friendly facial expression, his bright red paint job, and his working headlights, and the yellow 95 underneath one of them. And on the hood, we've got the old Rusty's logo, but shaded and enlarged, the Lightning Bolt stickers. And the both sides, we've got the yellow 95 with... I've on the yellow lightning bolt mixed with the flames from the World Grand Prix and the Rusty's logo and the gas cap and the red rims on the black wall light year racing tires and the exhaust pipes and the few contingency sponsor logos saying Piston Cup, Octane Gain, RPM, Revolting, and Clutch Aid. And on the top, we've got the yellow number 95 and the yellow name signature and the Rusty's logo on the spoiler. And in between, we've got the Rusty's logo and the red tail lights. And, the, and on the back bumper, we've got the medicated bump ointment in 95 on the back bumper. And that is it. So, what do you guys think? Which Lightning McQueen decal from the three main Cars films is your favorite? Well, mine's, mine's mostly the Cars 3 Lightning McQueen version over there. Let me know what you think, as well as leaving suggestions of which car to review next in the comments down below. And if you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out some of my other videos on my channel. And I hope to see you guys next time for another review, so please stay tuned. Oh, and I also want to mention that next week on the 25th, you know what day it is? Guess what it is in the comments down below. So without any further ado, goodbye now!